when we do data analysis, we would like to categorize into two distinct, um, I won't say zones, to, to two distinct types. One is we need to understand uh, and appreciate the data which we have. And uh, based on that, uh, we need to be able to predict um, whatever we, uh, we want to predict. Now, when I'm looking at understanding the data, um, uh, obviously, when, whenever um, you're predicting something, it will be based on some data. Understanding the data would uh, form an in, uh, integral part. And the kind of things which we need to understand, um, the current data would be, uh, we need to be able to make good uh, visual representation uh, uh, because the kind of insights one gets with simple, simple charts, uh, simple bar diagrams and, and scatter plots, those are extremely important. Now, when we are looking at the data, um, we, have, we have variables, uh, variables that we want to predict. And we also have variables uh, which we uh, want to use to predict, uh, predict something. So essentially, we are looking at um, two things now. We are looking at what is called univariate analysis. Univariate analysis would be looking at a particular variable in itself and trying to find out uh, on an average how does the, how does that variable behave? Um, is it is it kind of uh, bunched towards a particular number or is it kind of very spread out? Um, that does it have some uh, obvious properties which we can exploit? And those are the kind of things which we do in then univariate analysis. What we also uh, want to do uh, in understanding the data is uh, we also need to do what is called the multivariate analysis. And in a typical multivariate analysis, we are, uh, we are looking at the relationship between multiple variables. We are trying to find out if a particular variable is, is, is kind of um, explaining, uh, causing something else to happen, or is being caused by something else to happen. And these are the things which we need to be able to understand the past or understand the data. When it comes to predicting the future, there are two strands uh, which we should be uh, wary of. Uh, one is um, the kind of prediction which is sensitive to time. And those are typically the time series analysis. And the other kind of predictions are which are, which are, which are not sensitive to time, what we can call time invariant. Now, what are the what are the broad difference between, between the two um, predictions which are time sensitive? Uh, by that, what we mean is what we predict the particular value to be on a Tuesday should be different if the date changes from Tuesday to a Wednesday. If that's the kind of thing we are looking at a time uh, we are looking at a time series analysis, uh, the stock market would be an excellent example of that that the stock price which you are going to predict uh, for tomorrow uh, will be different from what you predict or what you're going to predict the stock price maybe five days from now. So therefore, the time is a very, very important part uh, in this kind of analysis and, and we, have to, we have to factor and, and account for that. For things which are, which are time invariant, of course, we are predicting things in the future, but there, uh, whether we make the prediction for a Tuesday or prediction for a Wednesday, they should not make any difference. To give an example, if you're trying to predict um, among among all the guys who are going to uh, going to borrow, or 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 among all the mailers which we are going to send, how many of them are going to default in the first example, or or how many of the guys who got the mails is going to respond in the same in the second example. I don't think there is any reason to believe that the numbers will be different from Tuesdays to a Thursday, right? And therefore, these are time invariant ones. Now, what we'll be doing in this program is we are going to look at uh, the time series part, but largely focus on the time invariant product predictions because large part of analytics, which we do also, you know, uses a lot of a time invariant prediction. Now, within the class of time invariant predictions, I would again further subdivide into, into, into two branches. The first branch is called the unsupervised learning. 
The second branch is called the supervised learning. What's the distinction between the two? Well, in an unsupervised learning, there isn't a final outcome against which you can cross-check how accurate you are. Uh, some of you might have uh, heard about the term clustering. I'll talk about it a little bit and you're going to learn about a whole lot of clustering in the program. But let me give you an example that if you have a, a large number of data, you can divide them into three or four clusters. And what it basically means is you're going to bunch the data into similar types and call it a, call it a cluster. Now, the cluster which you form how good or how accurate uh, how, how accurate they are, that question doesn't make any sense because there is no natural cluster against whom which you can cross-check and say, you know, this observation doesn't belong to cluster A but belongs to cluster B and I wrongly classified into cluster A. There is nothing against which you can cross-check and therefore it's, it's what we call an unsupervised learning. Supervised learning on the other side, on, on the other hand, is... Uh, where there is something against which you can cross-check. For example, if I'm trying to develop a model which predicts the defaulters uh, from the good good guys, the, the, the good borrowers, uh, once I have uh, classified the data into the defaulters and not defaulters, I can actually cross-check with the observations whether they actually defaulted or not defaulted. So to make it very simple, in an unsupervised learning, there is nothing to cross-check, but still we do a lot to kind of get better. And in fact, in a lot of artificial intelligence, which we do is based on unsupervised learning. Whereas in supervised learning, we, we, are, we are much more focused. We actually get there very directly and we can cross-check and say, look, what we have predicted, how close it is to the actual or how different is it from the, uh, from the actual. 